In the heart of the world's greatest desert, a ghost with elegant horns and a coat as white as sun-bleached bone, you are looking at the Dama Gazelle, a creature so elegant, so perfectly adapted to one of the harshest places on Earth that it seems almost unreal. The largest, most regal gazelle on Earth, but today it's one of the rarest. With fewer than 200 left in the wild, we are in a race against time. To understand why it's so endangered, we first need to meet the Dama gazelle itself. Scientifically known as Nangar Dama, this isn't your average gazelle. Standing up to 1.2 meters, or nearly four feet at the shoulder, it's the largest of all gazelle species, and their look is just iconic. A stunningly white body that reflects the brutal desert sun, contrasted by a rich reddish-brown neck and head. It's nature's perfect design for a life in the Sahara and the Sahel, the semi-arid lands bordering the Great Desert. They are true desert specialists. They can go long periods without drinking, getting most of the water they need from the acacia leaves and desert shrubs they eat. They are nomadic, constantly moving to follow the scarce rainfall and find fresh food. For centuries, they thrived here. But the story of the Dama Gazelle isn't just one story, it's three. Because within this one species, scientists recognize three distinct subspecies, each with its own unique features and, tragically, its own parallel. First, let's travel to the far west of their historical range, to Morocco and the Western Sahara. Here live the Moor gazelle. The Moor is the most striking of the three, with the darkest, most luxurious reddish-brown coat that extends further down its back. It was a jewel of the Moroccan landscape. The Moor gazelle is completely extinct in the wild. Decades of relentless hunting wiped them out. Its story should have ended there, but thanks to a small group of animals saved in a private collection in the 1960s, a global zoo breeding program became its only lifeline. Today, the Moor exists only because of these arcs, and incredible reintroduction projects are trying to bring it back to protected areas in North Africa. From the ghost of the West, we move east to the central Sahara. Here we find the Adra gazelle. It's lighter in color than the moor, and this is probably the look most people imagine when they think of a Dama gazelle. The Adra story is a paradox. It is the most numerous Dama gazelle in captivity, with strong populations in zoos across Europe and North America. But in the wild, it's almost gone, teetering on the very edge of fragility. Finally, in the easternmost part of their range, in countries like Chad and Niger, we meet the nominate subspecies, Nangar Dama Dama. This is the palest of the three, with the reddish-brown patch mostly confined to its neck. And this, this is the front line. This is where the last truly wild, viable populations of Dama gazelles are making their stand. These few fragile herds in Chad and Niger represent the species' last hope for a future outside of a zoo. Why did this incredibly adapted desert survivor end up on the IUCN Red List as critically endangered? The answer is a storm of pressures. First, uncontrolled hunting. In the past, traditional hunting was sustainable, but with modern vehicles and weapons, these elegant gazelles became easy targets. Second, competition. As human populations grew, so did herds of livestock. Goats and cattle now graze on the same scarce plants the gazelles need to survive. And third, habitat loss. Climate change is making the desert even drier, and human activity is degrading the fragile land they call home. Combined with regional instability, these threats created a downward spiral. The ghost of the Sahara didn't just fade away, it was pushed to the very brink. But the story of the Dama Gazelle is not over. 
gazelles born in zoos in Europe and the U.S. are being returned to Africa, released into massive protected reserves to build new wild populations. This is conservation in action. The Dama gazelle is more than just a beautiful animal. It's a symbol of the Sahara's fragile beauty and a barometer for the health of an entire ecosystem. Its fate is a reflection of our own choices.